I'm back. Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for another segment of 20 Random Questions. I'm your host, John the Truth Theoria, and today's guest is former champion Monte Mezzaclay. Where you at, Monte? There he is. What's up? Still looking good. Still looking in my, shape. My man, thank you very much. I'm uh, trying. I'm actually shaking back a little bit, man. I've been fluctuating up, down, up, down. The yo-yo thing. So much going on. Um, I want to run the uh, the marathon this year. Uh, this one I was on track. I did. Uh, I got the 18 miles, but we missed the deadline, so couldn't um get to 26. So I get the half. Uh, in on the um the fifth of May. Nice. And where so, are you doing that at? Here in Pittsburgh, the uh, Pittsburgh uh, Marathon. Um, I've never really wanted to run a marathon, but because I don't want to do it, I got to do it. <laughs> it's one of those. I'll tell you from experience. I did one just to get it off my bucket list, just to say right. I did it. And uh, don't if you're gonna run it, stay consistent and run it because about the fifteenth mile. I took a small break and then it was hard for me to get running again because my legs started stiffening up. I finished it, but yeah, once you're running, man, stay at a nice pace and just don't stop. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I don't play that. Um, I, I know the rules, you know, and I, I just one thing I do once I start going, there is no stop. Now we in we in mode. It, it, it is it is a great feeling though. It's a great accomplishment once you That's finish good. it because you realize not everybody does it, and and it's it's something to get off your bucket list. You know, actually, um, what surprised me, I, the people that I, I learned that did do it, like, I guess the one that really, Oprah ran a 26. Yeah, it's surprising. I mean, some people yeah. do it just as an accomplishment, just to get it off the bucket list. 26.2 miles is a big accomplishment. Uh, I just got hit 18. Uh, three, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Like, once I start going, I'm in, I'm, in, I had some, uh, when I did my 18, I think when I got to about, 13, 15, the last two, last three and a half miles, I couldn't believe how bad my was like, oh my God. <laughs> but I knocked it out. I got it done. So so you're becoming a marathon runner now. So what else is going on with you? Are you still involved in the sport of boxing at all? Actually, I am. Um not I was a lot of people think that I I'm involved a lot more than than I really am. You know, they think even when I was really all the way in. I'm, I guess could be because you do it, you stay away from it, shy away from it a lot. Like I'm not, I don't chase the fights. I don't, I'm not so anxious to get to them. I'm not, even when I'm uh, towards the end of my career, when uh, everyone thought I was immediately going to open up a gym and nah, I was, I wasn't like that. It was like, man, I need to stay away from it for a while. And now that I've been gone from it, um. I'm so anxious and eager to get to it. But the biggest thing is uh, my son. Um, if you don't know, you know, I'm Monty Clay. I'm Monty Meza Clay. And uh, my son is uh, Cassius Clay. I have a beautiful boy. And um, Cassius is uh, actually, it, it's something to watch. You you hear these things when they say, the apple don't fall too far. It's easy to, man, listen. He does things that, I'm not showing. He picks up just like it's an amazing thing, man. So I'm really on him. But he, I'm just in awe with him. The whole gym is actually the whole gym is in awe with him. Like, you know, the, it, he's a uh, something to watch. He really is. He's very impressive, man. At five, been in there his whole life. He came up in it, but three, really four years old now, and five. He just I'm getting some consistency. He, uh, he I'm not pushing the issue. He want to go. Because it's one of them things also that I'm not going to be that father that's get you. No, because with this sport, man, there's a lot of things that the people don't know that comes along with it. You know, I think the number one thing I would like to everybody know is, you know, be sure that you don't want to do this. You know, a lot of people want me to train them. A lot of, I see a lot of it. But, man, it, when it start catching up, man, it start catching up. So now let me bring up another thing. I saw somewhere that you take time to to speak to the kids and things like that. Are you still doing that? Oh, absolutely. I, I was. Um, I mean, you know what? I, I'm. I was. A, I am. 
huge in my community. I built a one heck of a store uh, for years. So like I'm the community store, I put an apartment, I uh, made the way I did it, you know, very creative when I do things. And um, I built a vending machine store that was that did, that did, did very, very well. So they all come to me, you know, they all come to me. I teach a lot, you know, I tell them a lot. I give them a lot. So yeah, um, no, I, I don't think you'll never stop being that way. You know, I'll never stop being that way. <clears throat> okay. So before we get to these random 20 questions, I want to bring up something for the Minnesota fans because you got a Minnesota connection, whether you remembered or not. You didn't actually fight him here in Minnesota, but one of our fighters went out to Pittsburgh and fought you back in 2010. And I just want to know if you guys ever maintained a relationship or anything or if you just fought and that was it. Do you remember fighting Alan Litzow in 2010 in Pittsburgh? Oh, wow. I do remember that. Wow. Let's out from Minnesota. Wow. You know what? <clears throat> let's out. The, they're actually, those, those were let's out brothers. Yep. Those were brothers and they both made a lot of noise. Yep. They both Jason did. and Alan. Yep. They, I fought Jason. No, you fought Alan, Alan but Alan. There's, Jason is the other brother. Right. Right. All right. I fought Alan. Yes. That's right. I fought Alan. It's out. And actually, I have a picture of, him right on my wall. I don't want to show that one, but, but it was a good picture. It was a day. I got a really good picture. He, um, that particular night, I threw the biggest show in the city for sure. For sure. I'm known for that show. So me and my man, let out shout out to him. Uh, he helped me, uh, make some history that night. I made history with that show. Now, wasn't there something to do with history about the main event in that you guys were the main event? Well, didn't that make history somehow in that venue or something like that? Yes. Yes. Um, it, it was like two, three different ways. I can't remember how it was, but definitely the first for the casino. Um, we were new to the casino. I think we prior to the casino been up probably 10 years now. Um, if that, that's, that's new. So um, when it came up, we were the first to perform as big as it was. It was like the first since so many years of I, I can't recall but i remember it being like like three major milestones for that that fight i can't remember what they were but yeah we made some history for sure so how how was your relationship with litzo was it just business did you guys talk after the fight at all did you guys maintain any type of relationship or no no nah, no no with no relationship it was just business after it was business after that we got we got uh it was pretty heated you know it was Though that was the time when I'm, you know, I'm going hard at that moment. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get on, you know, he day on, and I'm trying, you know. So it was like, it was some bad blood, you know. It just, it just happens though. But it was business, you know what I mean? But after that, now nah, we never. Um, but again, I, I wish him, I wish him well, wish him well, and I wish him well, and I hope he's still doing well. You know, that was one of my uh, biggest prayers uh, prior to my fight. Is you know, uh, Lord, know for sure I want to win. I'm not good cow, but upon you know or after this fight please let him be completely okay because i understand this man has a, a family to get to just like me a life to live just like me so hope may he might may he not leave anything in the ring okay well listen you ready for these random 20 questions <laughs> i'm ready ready or not here they go <laughs> all right question one so i don't want to talk about the boxing <laughs> Uh, part of your life yet but question one is just tell me about your background and your upbringing a little bit where you were brought up uh your siblings how you were brought up things like that and we'll go into the boxing in the second question okay um so you want to know where i'm originally from and yeah things came, like that um, let the fans know about you know if you got any siblings how you came up with your parents where you were brought up things like that yeah well uh, let me start by um i'm originally i'm from i uh, now i'm from pittsburgh i'm from a small town called Rankin, Rankin, PA, a little outskirt. Uh, I'm only 15 minutes from the actual city of Pittsburgh, downtown Pittsburgh. I'm called, again, it's called Rankin. But originally where I'm originally from, I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Um, I was raised in Washington, D.C. till I was uh, about uh, close to junior junior high, seventh grade or so. Um, uh, Landover uh, from D.C., Landover, Upper Marlboro, Silver Springs, all that, man. I'm from over there. But you know, I started getting older and started getting into things, you know, very, um, start getting older, let's just say I started getting older, you know, my mother and father started, uh, let's make a play, and it was time to make that play now. Um, and so we moved to uh, Pittsburgh. 
uh, Pittsburgh because my mother and father uh, met in the service. Um, my mother's from Texas. My mother's Mexican. That's where that's where the Mesa comes from. Um, Clay is my father. My father's black. <clears throat> so um, and they created me and they met in the service. And uh, my dad decided that they bought a home. My mother ended up getting hurt very bad. She she used to work for the CIA. And um, her first day on the job, uh, she was working on a building and a guy um, lazy, obviously. She asked him, did he chalk the wheel? Uh, and a forklift, and he said, yeah, but he really didn't. Uh, she would go to get out, and it rolls back and rolls off of the building. And when it's rolling off the top of the building, she had to pull her head, and her head grip chopped off, but her arm, she ended up losing her arm. It chopped her arm, and um, but they ended up putting it all back on, but she, my mother had been in pain for, for, the rest, for the rest of her life. She's pretty messed up, but um, but that's where the, the blood and guts come from. You know, my mom, they don't stop. Uh, moved to Pittsburgh, moved to Rankin. Where I learned about fighting, I was already fighting in D.C. too, not in the gym, but in the streets a lot, for sure, and just start fighting a lot here. Uh, I was in eighth grade in Spanish class when I got in a lot of trouble coming to the, coming to the office. Somebody heard my name and uh, came back and he said, was I a junior? He said he heard a lot about my father. His father boxed with my father. <clears throat> Lamont going to the gym, walked in, and saw she wrote. Uh, been in there since. I got, I'm the middle child of three children. Uh, that my mother and father had. I got an older sister and I have a younger sister. Um, we also have um, two adopted uh, brother and sister. So, you know, there's two brother and sister, but biological, uh, we're three. Uh, so uh, an adopted brother and adopted uh, sister, younger than me. <clears throat> I got two kids. Uh, my little my little girl, my first is uh, Jalay, Jalay Monte Clay. She's 14 November, she turned 14 November. Uh, and Cash has just turned five, February 28th. He's supposed to come on my birthday, February 20th. <laughs> I would have loved that. But he came eight days later. Okay, so now you just mentioned um, briefly that that your dad was a boxer. But I want to talk about, okay, go into a more question, too. How did you get involved in the sport of boxing? Um, it, it found me. I'm going to say it found me. You know, again, it was just my name was called over the loudspeaker in Spanish class. Come to the office, I got in some trouble. And uh, the guy that heard my name, um, heard my father again. His father used to box with my father. Um, uh, his name was Semino, Chris Semino. And uh, they amateur, his father and my father did some amateur boxing. Um, and again, my father always said he'd take me to the gym. Never brought, took me, found a gym, took me. So again, it found me. And he said, would you mind going to the gym? I said, yes, we exchanged numbers. His mom, him and his mom came and get me that next day. I walked in the gym. I did everything, everything. I remember everybody surrounding me and then he's a natural, but I never, that part being a natural, I don't know how true that really is because it took a long time. You know, you natural. I just think naturally they come together fast, but I don't know. They just probably, I just wouldn't, you know what? A lot of fighters go to the gym and have, won't compete. So I could say, I guess naturally won't compete for over a year before they fight. They train. I was, 17, I was 16 in January, turning 17 in February, found boxing in January, full-fledged competing the end of February, early March. Stays in the full-fledged, I was in the gym a month and a half, if that, while I was full-fledged competing in tournaments and everything. So I guess a little bit of natural. So now with your dad being an amateur boxer, did, did he ever come to the gym or did he did he help you out with your career at all? No, no, my, you know what? That is one thing. My, my father didn't come to lot to the gym with me. No, I could probably count the times ever that he'd been in the gym with me. He wasn't like, no, nah, my dad was supportive for sure. He was supportive. You know, he was very supportive. Don't get it. He just, that just wasn't, no, nah, I, I, I thought about that before too, but now, nah, so I would actually be very excited when he would come though. And the times that he did come, I try to show off, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get my shine on. So, but no, nah, he wasn't that. No, he wasn't that dead. No, that wasn't my pops. But he was surely going to be at all the shows, the loudest, you know what I mean, going hard. But training, and he was a working man too, you know what I mean? So he was doing his part. Okay. All right, question three. Can you tell me what your trainer, uh, Tommy Young Kello, meant to your career and your life? <clears throat> Tom. <laughs> Tommy, the number one thing I can say about Tom, I was very grateful to Tommy because you know, I would, as hard as of, of a worker I am, 
I work very, very, very hard. I like hard work, if that makes any sense. Um, Tom, too. He was, um, we were equivalent. Like, I used to try to burn him out. I used to try to do things, you know, whether it's pad work, whatever it is, to see if he, he would never, same here, he never bowed out. He never, he was, if he going to tell you to do, he would do. Tom was very, Tom is, Tom the truth, man. You know, so I get more than anything. I get Tom his props with that, man. So he did. He meant a lot. And I, I needed that. He was equivalent. He was equivalent to my work ethic. And I got one that'll run any, put anybody under, you know what I mean? In the ground. Tom ain't play. Tom was very, he was a workhorse. He is. He's a real, Tom a real teacher, too. His father's a teacher. So that's where he get it from. His father was like a real thing. I mean, a high school or so. So he, he gets it natural. But I mean, okay, so in boxing, but did what what did he do for you personally in, in outside the ring? What what did he bring to your life outside the ring? Outside the ring? Good question. I guess that was what did he uh, I don't know what the discipline that like, he was a, again, the number one thing he was a teacher. He was a teacher. He had a lot of good Tom had a lot of good quotes. Tom, Tom did. He he left me with a lot of pieces, but he the discipline, I'm gonna say the discipline, because he had you know, he had it and he would put you on the spot. He tried to make you feel, he made me feel guilty a lot. Him you know I mean, for doing some things. He knew I was going to go through it, but then Tom knows best. So if I'm, if I'm going to go do it, it would always be his voice in my back. Like, let me go. Let me go listen. Like I got some sense, you know, cause I can recall a couple of times I was out of town, um, had many opportunities. Um, actually, I can tell you that one of the biggest ones was I was invited with to Vegas to the Stars and Stripes event. Um, famous drummer. Come on. Come on. I'm bad. I'm bored. I can't believe I'm forgetting my man's name. He flew me to Vegas. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm pulling a blank. Wow. It'll come to me in a second. But, um, I was going, they invited me to leave. He invited me to leave with him after we was down there close to a week, um, took care of me. Venetian looked out for me, everything. I was going to get a deal. He was signing talent. I was one of the talents he was signing. Then he offered me to go to, um, I can't recall where. It was another place, but we was going to fly out. Travis Barker. Oh, Travis Parker from Travis 182. Barker. Yes. Like, there you go. I'm sorry. My bad, Travis. I forgot. It's just my mind. Just in the, I pulled blanks at times. But, and... He invited me to go. I never forget saying goodbye to everyone. Um, I'm letting them know I got to get back. My trainer on my heels, and I was going to go. <clears throat> but Tom went back in my head. I'm gonna get back to discipline. You want to be the champ? You know, you gonna say you want to be the champ? You gotta be disciplined. Get back. Get there. I'm like, man, this is an opportunity. Good thing he was in the back of my head. They left and crashed on the plane. That's when it. Uh, I was his, his, his security guard and his best friend. I shook their hand, said, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I did not get on that plane because Tom was in the back of my head about being disciplined going. And he crashed and died. Crazy, right? Oh, wait a minute. Tra no, that that's not the drummer that's dead from Blink-182. Yeah, no, he's not dead, though. He didn't He didn't oh. die. His, uh, his best friend and security. Uh, oh, a couple okay. other people died on the plane, but but you were supposed were... to be on that plane when it crashed. Crazy, right? Ooh. Crazy, crazy. They offered me to come in there. Crazy. I got a picture with his security and his best friend. I gotta go through my uh, uh, his security with uh, one of his good friends, real big dark skin guy, real big beard. So uh, how many short... how many people know that that you were supposed to be on that plane with Travis right. Parker when that plane crashed? I, I can only no, nobody. Probably me and my um. Uh, at the time, my publicist, uh, who uh, who was out there with me, um, but that was one of the craziest things. Like that was the craziest thing to me right there. All, and I was because Tom said get back, and made me feel guilty. Did I wanted you ever, to go. Did you ever tell Tommy that? <clears throat> I didn't. You know what? I'm good. I, I didn't tell him that. I'm gonna let him know that. I didn't ever spoke about it. I think I was stuck so much in the all life. And I think the most part I was being all was it because I was gonna get a deal. Like he was signing my talent. So I think I was more, I mean, obviously sad that they crashed and you know, but I was like, dang, opportunity lost. 
So I was like a little bit messed up on that. And I could tell you about were multiple you, so times and things were like you, that. Were you and Travis Barker like friends or that was just you guys met and were hanging out? Just let me, I want to, I can't even recall how the introduction came about. I was making so much noise at the time. Um, someone reached out from the team and to my, my to me, trying to get to me through my publicist and my publicist. He had, um, and he had explained to me the um, the deal, and we young, we probably we said I don't even want to say the number we had. <laughs> I don't even we young. We just hear the stuff on TV. We want this many millions of dollars. They brought us out there, flew us. I took care, put me in a Venetian, looked out the best, they're the best man. And I mean, why uh, were you hanging out with Travis Barker, a drummer from a rock band? What what, what was the connection there? How did you guys meet? I almost can't remember. They read. I almost cannot remember how it originally happened. But he he was signing talent, so they reached out oh, to me. Okay, okay. He was signing talent for it. That's what it was. He was signing talent for his famous stars and straps. Remember that brand? That his band, his brand. Okay, okay. And, now um, I know. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So they reached out to me. I was. They had a fight. I was the athlete. You know, meet the boxer. They had a like some great skaters and bikers, and okay. just so happened I was the athlete at a fighter. Making that making so much so that I, I really appreciated that, you know, and they looked out for me and um, fast forward, you know, after the crash and everything, lost contact and everything, you know, and you can imagine why, you know, he was hurt, you know, was the best friend and everything. So, so I, so I guess Tom can say Tom saved my life. Yeah, you might want to let Tom know that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna let him know. <laughs> All right, question four: You and former uh, world champion. Paul Spadafora are from the same area and had the same trainer as Tommy. So did you guys ever have any type of boxing relationship? As far as I could count the times me and uh, Paul Spart, um, a handful, three to four or five maybe. Um, we had the relationship we had as far as boxing goes. You know, we lived together and trained, you know, trained together, but he was – towards the end of his while I was, you know, our time was, wasn't lined up, but you I know. Mean, um, but I mean, so you guys actually did live together and you guys did uh, spar together though. So oh, you did absolutely. have some type of relationship. Oh, absolutely. That was, uh, for, for real, that was my man. Uh, that was my, actually, I'm the biggest part about me and uh, Spetty, if if he, I believe I told him. <laughs> um, Paul. Oh. He the reason why I became a fighter. The, I, I remember the, the night uh, Spatty won his world title. We was in West Virginia at the casino, the Mountaineer. It was nice. We, it was one heck of a show. But I remember coming back to the city, um, and we got a hotel and like a movie. I'm on the back porch. He up in the suite. Everybody in there partying, and I'm on the back porch by myself, just looking at, looking at yonder, <laughs> and I made my mind up that night. In Monroeville at the Palace Inn on the top floor. Hey, this is it. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna do. This is what I'm gonna pursue. It's gonna be my career. And so it was um part of uh that night at when he won the world title, I made my mind up that fighting would be my career. So because of wait a minute, let me get this straight. Because of Paul Paul Spatafora, you decided to be pro? Is that what no that be I was knew I was gonna be pro, but I mean, I was rumbling, knew I was going to fight, but it was official in my mind that this is what I'm officially going to run with. Okay. I'm going to go hard on this one. I'm going to go hard on this. And I did. You know, I did. I made my mind up that night because he, he had one hell of a performance for sure. But, I, you know, I'm a young, young kid, and I liked how they treated him at the end. You know what come along with it. You know, they sitting him right in the hotel. They, I mean, everybody, I'm like, all right, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm amongst it. You know, he bringing me along. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna run the show like this too. And lo and behold, that's what ended up happening. So now, do you and Paul still maintain a relationship at all? I love my man Paul. When he see me, it's all love. I ain't seen him. I've seen. I see him periodically. I mean, you. I'm mean, if I probably ain't seen Paul probably two years. Two years now. I've seen Mary so a year, two, three. You know what I mean? So we we do if we see him, it's still love. But like he got a lot going on, I got a lot going on. If we bump heads, it's always love. Okay. All right. Question five: Can you tell me about your boxing injuries that you had throughout your career? 
you know what? This uh, that this is a good conversation. <laughs> now, you know, I think I want to. I always I said that to myself. Also, I want people to know. Uh, I'll train people, and one of the first thing I introduce them. Uh, I, I I ask, "Are you sure?" You know, you you. I want to know are you sure. You know, I see a lot of people even on social media, different things. Are you sure you really want to do this? Are you like you really have to be sure? Um, because no one really explain. You hear when you're young the injuries that could possibly, but when you get there, because even it's 2024, we've four or five months into the year. Uh, every year, every so out of the year, something you might get a different injury or something. But this year, man, I see a specialist actually tomorrow. Tomorrow, well, I, I mean, but I mean, you had a lot of injuries through oh, your career, right? A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of surgeries. Um, got six surgeries. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Let a lot of, a lot of surgeries, man. Um, elbows and shoulders. Mostly my elbows was the worst. Uh, it was bone spurs and two, three, in each arm. Uh, snap tricep tendon that I fought that I lived with for a year. They had no, and then it was, it was raw. We rolled up, end up pulling the back, attaching it. Um, but again, I think that's what I want them to know is. Are you sure you really want to do this? Because this thing really start to catch up with you. You know, in the morning, I can't even close my hands. You know, now, up with hours, but in the morning, my hands are stuck like this, man. It hurt, you know, hurt bad. And I'm not going to lie. It make me, makes me wondering what I have. If I know and I feel this bad and was hurt, did it be at times? Make you wish that you never even did it. That you never even did it. It get that bad. Jeez. And get that bad. All right, question six. Do you have any hobbies outside the sport of boxing? I like a little bit of everything. Um, hobby is physical, like, but when you say hobby, like something that I'm consistently doing, I'm a worker, man. I'm very physical. I like working out. Um, I'm a swimmer, not I haven't been able to get to it. I'm a great swimmer, I'm a cyclist, I'm a runner, I do it all good um i want to get into like hiking i'm just i'm i'm real outdoors you know what i mean i am i'm really i am but i can't do as much as i want because trying to put everything back together you know what i mean uh okay. but no no consistent my son uh business building you know what i mean um i like to use my my brain a lot anything that's in my mind that's my biggest hobby i think um i put together so i'm gonna say creating okay i build all right, question seven. What advice do you give a kid that wants to become a boxer? Be sure you want to do it. Be positive you want to do it. Like just like I said a second ago, um, explain. I want them to know about these injuries and different things. Uh, I guess, and the number one thing is don't get hit. Move your head, man. Move your head. That's the number one. Move your head. This game, it's a game of hitting. Don't be hit. For real. I was upset with um. Of course, in my career, Mayweather changed the game. He did. He, you, I'm running around chasing everybody. Everybody want to be Mayweather. That drove me nuts, trying to chase you around the ring. Like, that drove me crazy. But you got to salute somebody that understood. This is hit and don't be hit, man. This is hit and don't be hit. Once you start dealing with the injury, really, so that's what I would tell the young boy. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. Hit and don't be defense, champ. Defense, man. Make them pay for they miss. Protect okay, yourself question, at all times for sure. Question eight. Did you have any boxing superstitions when you fought? Did I have what? Any boxing superstitions? No, I wasn't. Super, I mean, I've never been superstitious. I remember um, <laughs> I tried to be superstitious when I was younger. Uh, shout out to my Uncle Louie. My uncle, um, very knowledgeable man. Um, I respected his opinion. A lot of things he said, very smart. And I had a lucky rabbit's foot. <laughs> Let me tell you, you'll never forget this. He said, and I showed him here my lucky rabbit's foot. Here I'm with a blue pretty one with a keychain on and everything. I'm telling him it's lucky, lucky. He said, it can't be too lucky. I said, why? He said, the rabbit lost his foot. <laughs> I never forgot that. <laughs> I never forgot that. It can't be too lucky because the rabbit lost his foot. I said, wow. That makes sense. So no, superstition wasn't that wasn't part of me. All right, question nine. What's something that your boxing fans don't know about you? Hmm. 
put down pain now. And then well, I guess everybody knows Lemon Sun. I'm very man. Mm -hmm. Do they might I don't know. I think they don't know that I, oh, I'm an inventor. I'm officially an inventor. Um I have a patent. Um I'm very, very, very creative. What did what did you invent? I created a um a toy, but I, I have the rights not only to the toy for for toy guns, but I have the rights to real weapons also. Um I could show you better than I can tell you. Give me a second and I'll go grab it, but uh, and I'll come back with it. Sin is believing. So that's the biggest thing. I'm an inventor. And not only uh I don't just say I'm inventing, I create and let it. I've been everywhere with it. I've been a uh, Tyler Perry Studios trying to get on. I've been to uh, Rick Ross's. I've been to uh, Masterpiece. I've been to, um, oh, January, I was just on Shark Tank. Um, so not only am I a inventor, I'm, I'm an inventor really trying to get on. Okay, nice. Mm. All right, question 10. Who is someone in your life that has inspired you outside the sport of boxing? Inspiration, inspiration. Good question. Outside, can inspiration be? I mean, I do things for my family. I mean, if that's they inspire me to want them to have more, you know what I mean? Um, to live a lot better. Um, my son, my daughter, my my son, man. Hey, man, his relationship is something different. So I'm gonna say, I could say that could be my inspiration for sure, okay. for sure. But it, but if you mean if you're asking something like, I want to be like this guy or do it like that. Yeah. No, I just, because sometimes boxers get so caught up that their entire life and everybody that's involved in their life has something to do with the sport of boxing. So everybody usually that has inspired them has something to do with the sport. So sometimes mm -hmm. I like to see if somebody outside the sport has brought some influence into their life. Um, you know, I had a... Um... Like I said, I'm 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 really I'm in the business, you know, my family for sure, mom, dad, and all that. But I had I had a boxing my boxing manager uh wasn't involved in boxing until he met me. And I would like to say him, uh rest in peace. Um he passed away. But Mr. James Rice uh was like the number one black entrepreneur um fitness builder on the East Coast for about uh at that time 10 to 15 years. Um, he had 20 something McDonald's, um, plus 30. He was building businesses that no Carolina, he was doing his thing. And I, he, so he was very inspiring, you know, um, uh, as far as business, because I made that transition. I was business all the time for sure, but I always would pay attention. He had some real jewels for me. So him too, for sure. Okay. All right. Question 11. If you wrote a book on your life in boxing, what would the title be? Well, let me see my life. My life's a movie. Uh, um, respect my come. It could be a lot, man. It's a lot. I always thought about respect my come up. Um, something with persevere, perseverance. And, you know, hard. My life is a movie, man. Hard and why well, I me? Mean, just I don't, I don't. That's a good one. That is a good one. Could be a lot of things, man. Could be a lot of things, but on the same grounds. You know what I mean, on them saying edit. Anything to do with a hard, rugged, not again, um, disappointing. So you've never just sat down and thought about, man, if I wrote a book, this would be the title? Well, yes, but it would. It, I guess I can't be specific. You know, I can't be specific because it's a lot. It, a lot of things sum me up. And like I said, hard disappointing words so if we start to rumble all these words together <laughs> you know what i mean what could you possibly come up with that's true you know what i mean like but it's all leading towards the same these words hard uh difficult keep going perseverance not again disappointing <laughs> but you know what I mean? exhausted just thinking about it huh I said you're getting exhausted just thinking about it. Right, right. exhausting. That's a, that's another one. Exhausting. <laughs> Marathon. All right. Question twelve. Question twelve. What's the craziest or the funniest story that ever happened between you and a boxing fan? 
being a boxing fan. Yeah. Hmm, the crazy stuff. I'm not sure. Um, I guess I could give you some of that with um <clears throat> the number one, one of the things that um I can give you some. I'm known for being a nice guy for sure. You know, and when people see me, they say he's humble. Uh he's I would have never thought I would until I fight. You know, when I turn the switch on, then I'm somebody completely different. I'm 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 turned around. I'm that guy. I'm that guy. I'm completely different. I'm turned around. It's game time. So after a show and uh, later I would see people. I remember this one girl stopped. She said, Oh, well, she was actually scared to come talk to me. And she says, um, I, I came to your show. She's like, can I come up? She asked me, can she invite herself closer to me? I said, yeah, it's up. She like, and I seen you at the fight and I wanted to come say hi, but I was scared of you. She said, I had no idea you could act like that. You would be somebody like that. And I started laughing. I said, man, I was, it's game time. When it's game time, I'm completely different. I am. You would be surprised. I got a very, very, I said, no, I guess I could tell. Like, yeah, is that something the fans would know? No, you got to know. The fighters got to have bad tempers. You got a very, very, I got a very, 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 very bad temper. But I say that to say I'm older now and I understand now. I'm not a coach control and I'm glad I got it. Because now I'm, not a, I'm noticing it come into my son too. So I'm not to train it and teach it now. Like, nah, champ. You know what I mean, control this man. Walk away. Okay. All right. Question thirteen: Who's the one fighter that you just never got to fight that you really wanted to fight in your career? I fight him now. Now we fighting now. He got one hell of a fight. Uh, I wasn't sold on him in the beginning, but he the truth. I give him his props. You know, I give you props, and that's where it starts. He making noise, but I can get out with it. I give him the blues. What's the What's the young boy name? He doing his thing. Um, and they, they compare me to him. All, I get that all the time. I see, I get pictures. People say, I thought this was you. I thought, I'm Tank Davis. Tank Davis. Where you at, man? Where you at, man? Listen, I'll come out for that. I'll come out. You know, the, uh, stranger things have happened. Even with, um, even right now with, uh, Tyson, I got signed to Mike. You know, Mike Tyson was my manager. I got bought out by Al Hangman, biggest fighting promoter in the game. Um, Tyson was up, man. Put me on the undercover. You know, uh, they he was. They said he was. Um, he was inquiring about me on uh on his podcast. Uh, wondering what I got going on, what I'm doing, and I'm putting myself back together. So if it makes sense, man, listen, listen. We making fights that's not making sense right now. If you want real firework fights, you gotta go to somebody to really know how to fight. You gotta go to somebody to really to the real hungry fighters. I mean, um, opportunity has me another thing the disappointing part when i say my life things just occurred whether i could tell you about i got stuck i got took for forty thousand. you know management you know a lot of things happen that you don't get that opportunity to come you know what i mean and then you they wait you or dog you to the end but it's not the end if they say what what you want to do so so you'd come back out to fight tank davis man listen listen Tank, what's happening? What's happening? You want to, they want a real fight. They want real fireworks. I even with the, the pit bull, he's doing his thing right there. I'll smash him. He's just a lot of these fight fighters, like, even somebody like him, pit bull, he's aggressive, but he's you got that you gonna be aggressive. You gotta have game with aggressiveness. I got game with aggressiveness. He just forward going nuts. When you got somebody that know how to think in there and come forward and be aggressive. Now you got to fight. Now you got a real fight. Okay. All right, question 14. What's something that you're very passionate about besides boxing? Business. For sure. Guaranteed business, you know, business. You know, I, I take uh pride in the things that uh come to my mind that I could bring to life. You know, when I say I say that to say when I put together a business, it's not like everyone, it's the uniqueness in how I do things. I like the uniqueness in the way I do things. Like I can think it, the creativity of it and really bring it to life. Like my vending machine business, I got a concept 
but vending machine business that is the best. I'm not just saying this. It did. I had one machine, one vending machine, had multiple, but one of them was doing about 115, one, 115 annually. So it's just the it was the concept of where I did it, you know, how I played with uh the products and different things that was in the store. Okay. All right, question 15. Who was the hardest puncher you've ever faced in the ring in a fight or sparring? I, I'm, that is a great question. That is a great question. And I know who it is. I know who it is because I've actually spoke about it um, multiple times. Again, I give people their props and that's where it stops. I'm going to give you yours because uh, I think him uh Send them boys. They couldn't send me to the crib. They had to cut the check too, cause I stay out up there. I'm getting getting ready for a big fight from DC. Um, the boy Gary Russell. It was an amazing thing how such a small guy could punch so hard. It was very amazing. I was very impressed with that. Like I, I'm not even gonna lie. I remember the first time, you know, I'm up there. We getting ready. I see him getting rid of boys i'm not worried about them. that's why y'all call me up here getting right dang oh, and he got blind and speed it was i'm not i never in my life took like straight 10 down the pipe <laughs> straight 10 down the pipe man at the bed and i was like okay okay all right all right let's go let's come on holla at me now I knew it was it was turn up time for them, and I'm giving him the blue back and forth. We're giving the, he's sending boys home. I wasn't going nowhere. They had to up, they had to cut that check though. But um, he uh, I will go with Gary. Gary Gary was a real fighter, man. You got some fighters also that are real flashy. They got the game, but they not dogs. They not killers. He flashy got game. And he's a killer. He's a killer. I know my killer. I know my fellow killers. Okay, question 16. If the mayor of your city was willing to name something after you, what would you want named after you in your city? Hmm. Uh, a street. I thought it started out. I would like a street. Yeah, I would like a street. And they actually wanted me to run for um, a few months ago. Um, I was running for, um, they wanted me to be president councilor. They wanted me to be a council member and all that. They wanted me to run for mayor. They want me to run for mayor in my neighborhood. But I've been to the um, council meetings. It's too much bickering and all that going on, man. Like, I can't believe it. Like, that's a, there's no way I want to live with life, man. They complain and they want to fight and do this and do this. And then when it's over, you just, everybody get up and walk out like it never happened. And it was just about to be blows. <laughs> like, it's crazy enough. So they want me to run for mayor around here, but. Uh, yeah, if I, anyway, if I, yeah, I would like a street. I would. I really would. Okay. Question 17. If you could gift one person a million dollars, who would you give it to? If I could say that again? If you could gift one person a million dollars, who would you give it to? Um, one person a million dollars, who would I give it to? Am I allowed to say me? <laughs> like, how about me? You gotta give it to somebody. <laughs> I'm a perfect candidate for a million. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm be like, give us the weapon. Like, I don't know, bro. Like, why? Like, how about help me? Like, all right, let me see. Who would I give a million dollars to? <laughs> other than, other than me. Hmm. Mm, will my son work? Can I give it to my son? Sure. Here, son. <laughs> Here, son, so I can have parts of that. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know, bro. Listen, let me. And I guess I'm different on that because now, because listen, I've blown money. I've given. Listen, I got burnt. I got burnt. I've got burnt bad for years. So my my I've changed on that. Like I've helped. And the only people want to do is take, 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 take. You get, you get tired of, you get tired of getting took. You know what I mean? 
So me, yeah, me. Let me get that but see, but see, that's why that's an interesting question because even though a lot of us help people in the community and help things, if you had a, if you had to give just one million dollars and you can only give it to one person, that's hard to do because there's going to be other people upset with you why you didn't give it to them. Yeah. But this is the time. That's a great question at this time because at this time I can tell you. So what? You know, my clothing line. I want a clothing line. And on my clothing line, I was going to start, name my clothing line was going to be no. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> and then the second line of my clothing line was going to be no. Well, you can say it. <laughs> yeah, all right. The second line, fuck no. Real shit, man. Like, <laughs> listen, man. Listen, I'm, listen, I don't feel bad about, and that was the, that's the problem. People play with your heart if you got a good heart people play with it man they take advantage of it they dog you they lie they they do they do what they can to get from you and it's me me man let me get my m let me get that m yeah let me get that i, I, I deserve <laughs> that for sure for sure because i got burnt too much bro all right question 18 who was your favorite opponent that you fought in your career that's a good question. Oh, um, the fight that got me my deal with Tyson. Um, fight of the year. I was candidate for fight of the year. Um, wow. That's a clay and this will stay on it. Easy. I'm bad with name. Come on, you who's my fight of the year? You, you've done your homework. If I if I minimize this, it'll come up on my screen. Yeah, I've guard with it now, so I can't remember now. If I minimize this for 30, 10, five seconds, it won't go away, will it? Yeah, but I can I I can just edit it out. Okay, uh hold on one sec. Am I still there? Yep. Okay, one sec, one sec. Herrera, you hear me? What was his first name? Did you what say did Rivera? That? Did you say huh? Rivera? You said Rivera? No, Herrera. Oh, Herrera. Okay, yeah, I know your time will know. Yeah, he fought um, he fought Pacquiao and um, had Pacquiao beat him. Um, something Herrera, man, man, that was that was, that was fun. That was fun. That was everything. That was everything that I made of. That was everything. The all in one, one fight right there. It was hard. I get was back and forth. It was conditioning. It was skill. It was tough. It was bite down. It was everything, man. He, he brought it. He brought it all out of you. Absolutely, absolutely. You know the funny thing about that is I remember the exact moment um, when things changed. He, yeah, I, I, between like weigh ins and different things on the way up, the anticipation and those things. Alan Herrera, look, my niece is the beast. Shout out to my niece. Mont oh, that's another thing. Look up my niece, Montica. She look out for me. She be looking out for me. She, look, she just sent me the text, Alan Herrera. And uh, uh, look her up on Facebook and all that too. She a beast. She very, 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 I got beautiful niece. That was, she the first born of my niece, the kids, you know, coming up. I was in like seventh, eighth grade when she was born. But, um, uh, Alan Herrera. What was the question? I lost my time. No, it was you said that was your favorite opponent. Oh yeah, but I was I was heading to some question. Uh, I mean about that when, question about I, when it turned. About when it turned. Oh, when it turned at that fight. Yeah, Alan Herrera. You know, again, all the way up to the fight. I'm not the guy that I'm not nice to you at the weigh in. I'm not at lunch. You know, you got these guys that want to make um, how you say uh, silent agreements. You know, guys, I just want to make silent agreements with you on the way. You can tell who wants to be who not a real dog. You know what I mean? I'm a real dog. So, man, you don't come up to me want to be, hey, champ, good luck. Get away from me. Like, I, I, I ain't going to be mean. So, I just prefer to stay away from you. 
you know what I mean? Um, and he was, hey, you know, nice and all that. Some guys are really like that. And then in the ring, I, I'm going around the circle. I hit him up. He said, good luck. I looped around the ring again. He was turned around. He was turned around. I hit him, pound him up. He turned back around. I promise to God, I seen he was a completely different person. I'll never in my life forget that. He was a complete, he turned, I, that was the first time I ever seen somebody. I thought I was the only one that could hit a switch. I literally saw the switch that very moment. He was turned around. I hit him up when I came around. All right. He turned around, man, he was somebody totally different. I was in my side of the corner looking, I was like, oh my God. I never in my life forget that. And I knew it was on. I knew it was I knew that fight was gonna be just what it was. I knew I was up against something. I was up against a killer. All right. Question 19. Can you tell me an interesting story out of your career? Any story that the fans might not know? <laughs> interesting. Is it boxing? Is it yeah, anything to do with your boxing career? Anything that just the fans box. probably never heard of. Well, I mean, again, my life's a movie, so which ones do you want? I, I could tell you anything, any any story. It don't have to be boxing. No. Um, okay. Okay, I'm gonna give you. She said my shoes. You let <laughs> my niece said my shoes. I'm okay. I have a little one. Now I wouldn't. I wouldn't share this one, but since she brought it up, I'll bring another one up. But um, I left. I did. I left my shoes one one fight, um, and then on the screen. I'm not exactly sure why he decided to name me Monty No Shoes Clay. Came across the screen. That I don't know why she brought that one up. I wouldn't have never said that, but the the announcer or whoever was editing, whoever that was, that was putting that film together for it was like on Fox. I left my shoes. My um, I borrowed some shoes. They was like two sizes bigger too. They was big as hell. But the name that came up on the screen was Monty No Shoes Clay. So you forgot your boxing shoes when you showed up for the fight. So you had to use somebody else's shoes for the fight. That was, yes, they showed up for the fight. I don't know why she brought that one up, but I guess um, it, that, and I was mad as hell. We reached out to the company like, man, take that corny shit off the screen. What's wrong with y'all? Like, erase that. So we, you know, called and complained about it. Like, I have no idea what made you say that silly shit. But uh, that was a silly story. But I guess the other interesting part is again, I got took for forty thousand. I got took for forty. I got took for forty thousand, and um, uh, what happened with that was, uh, I guess, a very interesting part about that is, uh, when it was time to purse bid to bid for the purse. Um, yeah, well, no bid for it was a bid. It was time to purse bid for what the hell was we bidding for anyway. I lost a bit. Oh, we've been uh, for the title. See where the title was going to be had. Um, I was number one. So we always want, you never want to leave the country. You want to stay on your soil. And if you can have uh, a home field advantage, you will. I got took for 40000 I lost a bid by 2000 I would have had way more than enough and if, I, if I hadn't been, if I hadn't got took for the forty. Yeah, but explain I, that. Explain that so the fans understand that how you got took for the forty. Um, I was in training camp, and um, I had a panel of investors, um, some great investors, and uh, what ended up happening was, while I was in training camp, I trusted my people and everything, and uh, they called me on conference call and it says, um, we got it. This guy who wants to be the treasurer. Everyone else was agreeing with him. I said, well. If y'all agree, I agree. I mean, obviously y'all done y'all homework. Y'all want to put him on. We got all these investors that we got a panel of like 12. Mark Adams and y'all smart. I'm trained. I mean, I haven't got the meeting, but I bless y'all so far. We've been rolling, doing this good. <clears throat> um, so all in favor on the phone, the conference call say I. I said, Well, I'm asking if y'all do y'all trust. They say, Yeah, I, 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 I. Said, all right, well, I'm going off what y'all say. I. A month later, forty thousand down. Right when they took, and then it was hey, that, and that's right when I hit time. Now that fight got me, put me in position for number one for the title, and um, 
I lost the purse bid. I lost that bid by the two thousand dollars. Again, if I hadn't, if I'd have my forty, I would have overbid it by five or ten. So, no, there, was nothing, so there was nothing you could do. This guy just stole forty thousand dollars from you. He couldn't get charged up. Nothing. I mean, my, the team did what they could. They got pieced back together, but he held a good position too. And if you know how that worked, he held a good position. He did. He had a good position in the city. Uh, who he, the people he know, whoever was all this, it was, it was bad, man. It was hell, man. So it turned my, it turned my career upside down too. So they ended up sending me to Mexico. Um, you never want to fight in Mexico. You never do that. <laughs> you who does that? I was mad as hell. Um, and I'll never forget. I couldn't take my, um, I couldn't take my, uh, my doctor with me. My cut man. I had a nurse. My doctor was a nurse. So you know. Uh, Instantly, if I'm done, if I'm dehydrated, you gonna come and you gonna inject me, you gonna give me everything I need to get back up. I mean, that's just that's what the game is. You gonna rehydrate. And um, again, I'm going to Mexico. I can't use none of their doctors. I'd be a fool. <laughs> be a fool. I'd be a they poison me, kill me. I'd be a fool to go and let them poke on you. So I'm never forget. I was hallucinating and everything. I was I was so dried out. I was so. Literally, I never forget trying to go to the movies, trying to walk. I'm so hungry. Um, 12 rounds, sauna suit on, hat on, gloves, pad work. I'm I'm dying. I'm literally going down like I don't know how I'm hanging. They're not even giving me drinking water. Give me an ice cube. 12 rounds, completely burned up. So I go to the movies. I don't know what I was watching. And I'm just you thinking like, man, fuck it, just go eat, go drink. Man, they, then they won $1,000 a pound. For every pound that you go over and you going so crazy you like fuck it fuck it to pay then you like nah you ain't got just no you 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 rumbling with your conscience no pull it together stop stop like literally going nuts man so get to the fight get to the fight the next day that wasn't even 24 hours but we get to, you know you need more than 24 hours to rehydrate when you that bad and i was that bad uh, through the night, I wasn't sleeping. I'm waking up, going nuts. So we get to the fight. We run them. Dang! I hit the boy with a good. I hit the boy with a good. Um, I hit the boy with a good shot. Had him does Had him uh, stumbled him out. Whatever. They no stop the fight. No break. No no nothing. They didn't get let him recover. Eight count. Whatever. They, they let him recover. Let him do this and let him fight as you should. It. He caught me with a main upper back ring. He caught me with a main right uppercut. I buckled. They jumped in and stopped the fight on me. <laughs> so, you know, you don't, that simple, you know, you let him recover, but you don't allow me, you know, at first, boxing is back and forth. You dig? Um, but you were, in, but you, were in the, you were in his house. You know how that goes. Right. I'm in his house, but I won't be in your house if you don't take 40000 from me. Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? So, right. Well, listen, last question. So question 20, if you died tomorrow, what would you want your fans, your friends, and your family to say about you? Say about me. I was a giver. I was one hell of a giver. I was a doer, a giver. I was about that action, man. I live, I'm, I, I'm, I am who I say I am. I'm, I'm about this life. I was really about that, that hustle hard. Um, one thing about me, I know I'm the ultimate hustler, man. The ultimate hustler. The ultimate hustler, man. I, I'm very creative with the way I get things done. I make I make things happen. I do. I make I'm 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 a, I'm a playmaker, real rap. That I was the giver, playmaker, made moves, man. Looked out for any and everything, and looked out for any and everybody on my way up. I looked out for everybody on my way. So yeah, that I looked out. Okay, well, listen, man. I appreciate you taking time to come on and do the twenty random questions. If there's anything you want to say to your fans before we go, go ahead. Oh yeah, check check me out. I'm about to start my my YouTube channel. Check my YouTube out now. I've been posted, but I'm gonna try to be more consistent. Um, uh, my name, my segment is gonna be Bag Music. I'm gonna be showing these boys how to really rock, man. I'll be watching people. I see y'all, Kitty Pat, you know, Patty Cake, Patty Cake with the bag. I get down, you know, I get down. I'm bad fights. Um, to this day, come on ESPN Classics. Um, I'm got fights where I throw over a thousand punches around. So I can get busy. I'm gonna show you how to really punch. You know, man, you get your punch count up. You know how to really get yourself in shape. So you know, my Instagram, Monty. What's my Instagram? Team Messer Clay. Uh, follow me on Facebook. Monty, my life's a movie.
because it is. Um, and I want to try to TikTok stuff and all that too, but just follow me. Help me out too. I'm looking for some help to help me with my social media. <laughs> all right, hold on. And with that, the truth has spoken. <laughs>